A big advantage of the Nintendo Switch is the ability to play home console quality games on the go. The convenience of portability allows a lot of opportunity for playtime, but as a result, it can be easy to feel like you've run out of games to play. Plus, games can be expensive, and it's always good to get a lot of bang for your buck. That's why I decided to make this list of what I believe to be 5 underrated, cheap Switch games, in no particular order. Hopefully, if you're looking for something to play, you'll find something new and interesting among these choices. West of Loathing from developer Asymmetric is an adventure game slash RPG available for $10.99. The game's unique take on a fantastical Wild West creates a great atmosphere as you travel from place to place on your trusty steed. I named mine Regatta. Despite not much of a main plot, West of Loathing is driven by its many, many side quests. There is an abundance of scenario variety, and pretty much every side quest is unique and motivated by its own interesting subplot. At any given time, there are at least 5 or more things you could be doing, and you are constantly bombarded with more, so it's difficult to stop playing because you always want to finish the ongoing threads. The progression is both exciting and addicting, and it hardly lulls for even a second. Furthermore, the writing is incredible. Nearly every line is hilarious, whether it's the dialogue between characters, the fantastic narrator akin to adventure games of old, or even the menus. Getting new items is a treat, because that means you get to open the bag and read the hilarious commentary with which the game describes each item. The writing is potentially the funniest I've experienced in any game. It's between this and Undertale. The immense amount of care put into West of Loathing results in an experience that fills me with delight at almost every moment. Astro Bear's Party from Cubic Games is a multiplayer game for 2-4 players. It's available for only $5, though I got it on sale for 3 I'll admit, when I first saw this game in the eShop, I thought it was shovelware. Then, I played it on my friend's Switch, and I quickly bought it after. The concept is simple and easy to pick up, even for non-gamers. As you run around the planet, you constantly leave a trail behind you. If you crash into any trail, including your own, you're eliminated for that round. You can also jump and hover in the air for a limited amount of time. In addition, you can press another button to briefly speed up. With the help of these abilities, you try to stay alive while also trying to cut off your friends. As each round progresses, the game gets more and more hectic as there is less and less room to move around, and when one round ends, the next one starts almost immediately. I've spent a lot of time playing this with my siblings and cousins. The experience is super exciting and fun, constantly keeping you on the edge. Players can choose from four different bears, each with different stats and their own description. Our favorite was Igor, a proud and loving father. You can also change some settings, such as planet size and maximum points, to expand replayability. I will warn you though, do not come into this looking for any sort of single player experience, as you can't play against bots. While there is technically a single player mode, it's very uninteresting and not something that I played for more than a minute or two. However, if you want a fun local multiplayer game, look no further. Slimeson from Fabraz is a wonderful platformer that I believe deserves much more attention than it receives. You can get it for the low price of $11.99. While the visual style might be jarring at first, it's something you quickly get used to. As Slimeson, you can jump, air dash, jump up walls, and hold ZL to morph through green platforms. Holding ZL also slows down time, which helps with platforming a lot, but you can't always rely on that depending on what platforms you need to use. The platforming is super fun to execute. The levels are quick and pungent, and the level design is constantly evolving, meaning that I always want to keep going. The music is phenomenal too. If that's not enough, Slimeson features multiple free DLC expansions. Still not convinced? Thankfully, Slimeson has a demo available on the eShop. That's actually how I first discovered the game. I highly recommend you download the demo and give it a try. I doubt you'll regret it. Dark Witch Music Episode Rudy Mickle is a strangely titled rhythm game from Inside System and Esquarta, available for $7.99. Rudy Mickle features the music from the Legend of Dark Witch series, but I've never played those games, so it's definitely something you can enjoy without doing so, and the music is definitely good. The game has to compete against different bosses, all of whom attack using various projectiles. Each color of projectile is marked to a different face button, and you have to press the correct buttons at the right times to succeed. My main issue with Rudy Mickle is that for every input by the player, the player character makes a scream-like noise that does not mix well with the music. Optimally, in a rhythm game, your input should enhance the music, allowing for true engagement. Given this is not the case, the game is not as good as it otherwise could be. Despite this, Rudy Mickle kept me happy and having fun through the entire extent of my albeit short playtime. This game has a demo as well, so I definitely recommend you check that out and see if you enjoy. 
Golf Story from Sidebar Games is the most expensive game on this list, sitting at $14.99, but that's still pretty cheap compared to video games in general. Come to think of it, Golf Story isn't really underrated, as it actually has received a good amount of praise and recognition, but I want to talk about it, and it still feels like a good way to round out this list. Golf Story creates a great golf system to be used across its eight differently themed courses. Playing a nice round of nine is very enjoyable on its own, but my favorite parts of the game were direct competitions against other golfers. I do wish that happened more though. Exploring the grounds of the various clubs is pretty fun too, and in doing so you can discover some other activities, such as mini golf and disc golf, both of which are really enjoyable. Also, the scenic music and the great sprite work combine to create a really nice atmosphere. A lot of the game consists of challenges from various NPCs across the world. Sometimes, the scenarios are really great and the challenges are interesting. Other times, however, the activities can be somewhat mundane, though it does feel good to level up and improve your skills. Another gripe that hurts the game's sense of progression is the story, which leaves a lot to be desired. There is really no overarching narrative, and that's especially disappointing given the game's amazing opening segment featuring the main character learning to play from his dad. Overall though, despite some issues, Golf Story is a fun and relaxing experience that I really enjoyed. And there you have it. Those are five, in my opinion, underrated, cheap games available for Nintendo Switch. Let me know if you've played any of these games and what you think of them, or if you plan on getting any of them after watching this. Also, let me know about the hidden gems you've played for Nintendo Switch. I'm always looking to expand my library, despite the wishes of my wallet, and I'm also interested to know what you've been playing. Finally, let me know how you like this video. Depending on what you guys think, I might do a sequel in the future talking about some other underrated Switch games. Stay tuned for more videos, and until then, I'm Youngster Skamor, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.